Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for having us. Uh, we've been given the opportunity to come up here today and talk to you about uh, our first year using Cloud Foundry and Bosch and pretty much automating yourself out of a job, which is fine because everybody's hiring. So who are we? We're from Cisco. We're based in London, and we're trying to give people nice things. Basically, our team is responsible for building a foundation platform for delivering upcoming Cisco web services. So in the beginning, a year ago, when we started playing with Cloud Foundry, playing really was the optimum word. Um, we already knew we wanted to use Cloud Foundry because we'd done, as you heard, 60 pages of due diligence on past solutions. Um, but getting to the point where we had a working Cloud Foundry and gaining confidence in that deployment was the next part of the puzzle. Um, we spent a lot of time deploying via trial and error. We spent a lot of time learning through debugging. Um, we tripped up massively on all the Cloud Foundry v1 documentation that was still floating around the internet with like no context. Um, and most of our success actually came from borrowing uh, manifests from the internet. We just scoured the internet for pieces of YAML that kind of looked like they might possibly be a Cloud Foundry deployment manifest and throwing them at our deployment and seeing what stuck. Um, so lots of manual work there at the beginning. And um, this quote from Dr. Nick from Stark and Wayne summed it up last year at the Platform CF conference, which was, I've got a running Cloud Foundry system, and if you've ever tried to do this yourself, you may never have got to this point, um, which really resonated with us kind of 12 months ago. So those of you from the community will know that you can't invoke the name of Dr. Nick without mentioning Bosch. And so we've had an interesting piece Woo! of experience with Bosch. Yeah, Dr. Nick. Um, so Bosch is an interesting thing in that there is a weird learning curve with Bosch in that you arrive at it in day one and say, well, why do I need Bosch? I already know Chef. I already know Puppet. I already know CF Engine. Why should I learn another automation tool? And so then you spend the next two weeks going off and automating Cloud Foundry with your favorite automation tool. You then come back after two weeks of success, and then you give Bosch a real try. And you spend the couple days that it takes to learn the basic concepts of Bosch and deploy Cloud Foundry through Bosch. A couple days later, you've got it working. You look great because you've managed to deploy this distributed system. And then all of a sudden, you're drinking the Kool-Aid. You're like, oh, this is awesome. I've got to get me some more Bosch. And then you go out to the community, and you find the community Bosch releases for other tools, and you start building everything. You want to deploy your house with Bosch. It's a really, really useful tool. And then you drink too much of the Kool-Aid, and you start thinking, what if Bosch was better? I could change Bosch. And then perhaps you have a colleague who starts making pull requests against Bosch CPIs breaking the build and getting taught by the Bosch team about the value of test-driven development. So it's a really nice way of putting it. Share it today, I think it was. Anyway. Um, so things have gotten a lot better in the last year. Matt was saying some of the problems we had earlier. And Pivotal took over the Cloud Foundry community pretty much a year ago. And we should be really proud of how far we've come in a year. It's a massive change from a year ago to today. We have fortnightly open source releases that are consumable pretty much every release. There are public Bosch stem cells that actually work to deploy those releases on top of. There's new great tooling like SPIF for deploying Cloud Foundry. There's community support through both the VCAP dev mailing list and the community pair who work on GitHub pull requests and issues to merge your changes into Cloud Foundry. And there are sample manifests that you can actually deploy this thing with. So all of this help got us to a point internally at Cisco we were able to deploy a good developer-facing beta. And then we had the interesting problem of having enough support from the developers that we had more Cloud Foundry installations than we could manually manage. So having too many Cloud Foundries to manage is a nice problem to have, but it's still a problem. Um, and we realized we wanted to be able to deploy, test, and upgrade CF through Jenkins. Um, why Jenkins? We already use Jenkins. Um, we know Jenkins. Jenkins is a nice, polite, friendly guy. Um, we didn't feel there was any need for layering any more tools. Um, on top of what we're trying to do. Um, so we kicked off a project named C3CI, and it was joint work between Cisco and some awesome guys at Cloud Credo in the UK. Um, you can probably guess where the three Cs in the name came from. So Cloud Credo, it was really good we found them because they already had a lot of experience running Cloud Foundry v2 in production, and they'd also done work with um, deployment tool chains of open source Cloud Foundry. So we wouldn't have got anywhere near as far as we have as quickly without kind of standing on the shoulders of giants. So being developers, we are fundamentally lazy. So we didn't want to build anything new. We wanted to take as much as we could from the community releases and build our tooling with things that already exist. So we took Bosch. We took the community Jenkins releases. We took Spiff. 
We took the NETS tests, we wrote a little bit of Ruby and a little bit of Bash and sort of weaved it together into a pipeline that we can deploy Cloud Foundry through Jenkins. So our current pipeline that we're using to deploy all of our Cloud Foundry installs has three stages. There's the deploy phase where we take the environment-specific metadata along with our core Cloud Foundry deployments. We merge them together using Spiff, and we deploy that on top of OpenStack using Bosch. We then run the tests that Pivotal publish to validate that our Cloud Foundry installs are good. And then we have a small layer of testing on top of that to make sure that the customizations that we deploy on top of Cloud Foundry are both present and functional. And once we're in this situation, um, with kind of Jenkins being at the heart of everything and all our kind of configuration for different environments in Git, we have this really good situation where we have consistency of our kind of our beta, our production environments, um, but without locking down developers who are actually trying to improve um, our paths and add new features. Maybe they're hacking on some of the upstream features from um, the open source Cloud Foundry repos. Because all you need to do is branch. If you branch, you, um, next slide. If you branch, you can then just tell our uh, C3CI boss, uh, Jenkins release um, which branch you want it to be authoritative for. You do a Bosch deploy. That brings up a Jenkins pre-populated with all of the jobs for deploying and testing a Cloud Foundry, but based off your specific branch of configuration. Um, so why are we still here? Um, this stuff does work. We use it in production. Um, C3CI is live for us. It has saved us days, probably weeks of time manually testing and verifying and deploying multiple Cloud Foundry um, situations. But we can't go home yet. There's still kind of lots of other things we need to worry about. Um, scalable monitoring, persistent log storage, custom services and brokers, um, and also scaling out, like, how do we do a lot of the network stuff that was talked about um, in the VMware talk? You know, how do we kind of make this appear as one global namespace, even though we have multiple different Cloud Foundry installations? On top of that, we still need to share the love, you know? Um, there's no point us being the bottleneck on these technologies like Bosch within our teams. We need to kind of promote this kind of information to developers and whoever's gonna be operating Bosch long term. Um, so yeah, we, we can't go to the pub just yet. But that's all we've got time for. Um, I hope you guys found this interesting. I hope that maybe it gives people slightly newer to Cloud Foundry um, some ideas on getting more serious with Cloud Foundry in your environment and how you might take the next step. Our contact details are there. Reach out to us on Twitter, email, um, all of our codes on GitHub at the link below. Um, it'll be really interesting to hear what you guys are doing in the deployment space. Thank you. Thanks very much.